trouble getting the show on tonight uh, because somehow it wouldn't go over to uh, 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 tune in and or uh, the, uh, YouTube and uh, put the uh, put the show on. It just didn't wouldn't go. And uh, finally, I got it going, but it took a while. It took a while, uh, you know. Uh, and 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 the reason I don't know what the reason is, but all I know is I bought a new piece of little equipment today. One of the reasons you heard me on the air like canceling it as I ordered up on this thing because this one's small and I liked what it did and it's really fucked. It's uh, called the Stream Deck. You see that? And you're supposed to be able to program into it all these, uh, all, all these uh, things, okay? And it wouldn't do it, okay? Uh, and it, well, it did it and it did it fine and then when I unplugged it, it, uh, all, it reverted to other stuff. It just doesn't hold the, um, the, the thing, uh, the, uh, the configuration. See, what I can do with this thing, let me see here if I can do it and not take myself off the air in doing it. But uh, let's say here if I want to configure this, okay, uh, th th there it's got a thing that says record. I don't want that, so let's delete it, okay? Uh, but let's say I want to have a scene, okay? And I want the, uh, oh, I want the, um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the picture that we have, uh, let me see here. Well, wait a minute, hold, hold it, please launch game capture. I don't want game capture. Hold on a second. OBS Studio, okay, there we go. There we go. Uh, let me get rid of that, okay. Uh, this is a whole new thing, anyway. I delete it, okay. So now let's say I want to put in a source, okay. So you see at the very uh, end here, there's nothing, okay. But now there is because I put in a source. And then I, I go uh, uh, down here and I say I want, say, the, the GabNet Anim. And I, I call it uh, GabNet so that uh, the key says GabNet on it. So you see the key now. Uh, it says uh, GabNet on it, and if I push it, uh, that should the GabNet the GabNet logo should come up. Oh, but it doesn't. <laughs> oh boy, let me see. Oh, scene. That's what I wanted. That I, I I'm sorry. I uh, I wanted uh, the GabNet logo. Okay, so if I push this button, the well the GabNet logo should come up, but it doesn't. Oh uh, well. What happened to the GabNet logo? It's there, I'm sure, what? The GabNet logo disappeared, oh, I see what happened. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now let me push the button again. Oh well, this piece of shit doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Here's the camera, okay. Uh, and I, I go here, and, and watch, this thing should, should go to GabNet logo, and it uh, doesn't. Um, test. Let me see. I just put in test there. Okay, and then I push the button. There we go. See, and I push the button, and 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 then let's say in another one of these, I put in my uh, my uh, 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 video. Okay, so I want that. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, scene. Okay, scene. Okay. Okay, replace. Uh, then here I want to go uh, Alex's camera. Okay, um, so I pushed Alex's camera, and now if I push it, I should get my camera. See? See? Now that's how it's supposed to work. See? It's supposed to be there and there. Okay? And, and, and all these things are supposed to work, but unfortunately, uh, we're not. Uh, we're not broadcasting, or we weren't. We are now. You know, uh, just one thing after another. So I ordered, I, I liked this thing when I came, and I said, I bought the small one. I want, I want the big one with all the stuff on it, with about 15 things that I can do. And it was, and then I, as I was doing this, I unplugged this, and I replugged it in, and then when I put this stuff up, it wouldn't come up with the, uh, the current um, um, stuff. You know, with all the uh, the stuff that I had already programmed into it, so I'm going to have to figure this thing out. Once I figure it out, 
you know. Uh, but um, I, I should be able to, in that, uh, in this one, put in, uh, uh, let's see here, Ramble logo. Uh, and I go Ramble, just so I have it in the thing here. Okay. So then if I go, if I push this button, the Ramble logo should come up. There we go. See, and there's the other logo. And here's, uh, and if I go here and I do this and I say Alex's camera, then this one should bring Alex's camera up. That's right. See, see how easy it is, all of that? Well, uh, for some reason, it screwed up my, uh, my OBS and I wasn't, it wasn't streaming. So that's, you know, I, I need these problems like I need a hole in the head. But I, the reason I did this is because this, this program I use called OBS, I can use keyboard things to change the picture. See, I got the keyboard here, and if I want to go back to the GabNet logo, I just, I just push uh, this button, and there we go, right? It's very simple. If I want to do a cut, I, I push that button. Now, that should all work, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't, okay? So that's the problem. It would be nice if it worked, uh, but it doesn't work. Uh, and uh, sometimes while I'm doing the show, these buttons don't work anymore, and so I'm having to, like, click around and so on. So I heard about this thing, and I went, yeah, that's not a bad idea. You know, I'll, I'll get, uh, get this thing, and then I can do a lot of the things. With, and if it goes out, it doesn't matter because this will, uh, this will do it, you know. So, you know. That's 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 the the problem with this thing. And uh, um, uh, uh, let's go back. Let's go back to me here. There we go. Okay. See how easy that was. But and uh, all these other things change too. What is this? This is a, like well, I'm gonna. I'll over the weekend. I'll figure it out, and I'll have it figured out before I die of cancer. Okay. All right. Anyway, you know what I didn't do. Oh boy. Well, I, I, I'm a, I'll, I'll do it once I get a citizen panel going here, which I'll, I'll start up now. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, and I gotta go get my coffee, because with all this, the, the, the coffee didn't go. So for some reason, it, it, you know, it could have been YouTube. It could have been something with YouTube. and might not have had anything to do with this. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, here we go. Let's uh, put myself online. There we go, and we got the panels. Uh, and I also had this thing. It was really nice because I had it so it had different pictures. It had like the Ramble logo in there, and it had the Gabnet logo, and it had uh, you know some other stuff. And then it didn't hold. It just didn't hold. Well, here comes Charles Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. Charlie is the first one in this evening, and since he had a spot on here last night. Uh, I'm sure that uh, as soon as I get some video on him, he'll pop up in my uh, in, as a picture on the on the thing. Uh, will he? I don't know. Well, maybe he was. Where? where, where uh, well, I can't think you were in another. No, you, were you in another spot? Oh well, let's see here. Well, here comes Phil I'm Meyer. Here comes Phil Meyer. All right. Uh, let me see here. Here comes Phil Meyer. Let's see if he pops in. Uh, no, he doesn't pop in. Okay, so I've got to go here, and I will, um, uh, let me, oh, here we, more, uh, Bree is calling. Uh, hold on a second, Bree. Everybody hold on now while I try and get people uh, lit in here, all right? Let me see here. First of all, Charles Wallace, okay. Ah, there we go. Is he there? There he is. Okay. I, I, I figured, you know, with everything else fucking up tonight, that was going to fuck up too. Uh, here comes uh, the scuba diver. Okay. Uh, he's in the second spot. In the third spot, we'll put in Bree. And let me see here. Uh, Bree. Okay. Um, uh, come on, Bree. There we go. Of course, he's got a lot of light in back of him, so we can't see his face. Hey, Bree, are you in uh, witness protection? Yeah, it must be. <laughs> yes, because you're backlit. I'm an audio guy. I'm not a video lighting guy. That's, that's <laughs> Kuala Lumpur behind us. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Would that's you people right. talk with each other while I go get my coffee? 
Don't you have an assistant to get you coffee? Uh, no. But, but Can't you just yell Marjorie coffee? Yeah, but you, you, know. you, you, you can talk <laughs> with each other. It'll, it, 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 will take me, it will take me a second. Uh, oh, go, go and enjoy yourself. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, let me go get my coffee, okay? And I'll let you guys uh, talk to each other, okay? All right. Yeah. So, Bree, are you in a hotel or is this your apartment? Yeah. Uh, no, so I'm in a hotel. Uh, I have okay. to. Uh, I have to do some uh, apartment hunting this week, so mm -hmm. that's sort of what I've been doing. It's it's kind of tough because um, there's just so many different variables, and uh, you know my budget is not extremely high, but yeah. uh, you're talking about you know for what we need about I'd say anywhere from. Seven hundred to one thousand dollars a month. American. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. American. So, uh, then, but you know, the the newer high rises are going for you know a thousand bucks, and they have the amenities and they're nice and modern, but you know you got to take an elevator, and it's a little bit further from my office. And they're kind of, I call them ant farms, you know, and yeah, yeah. but if I get one of the homes, there's, there's terrace linked homes. Um, they don't have the shuttle bus and they also, the security, eh, you know, you're not quite sure. So uh, I was watching a uh, thing on Dubai the other day. And uh, this woman, uh, who was like a real estate agent or something, divorced, 50 years old, not bad looking, uh, she and her children were living in a uh, a home in Dubai, and it was, you know, fairly out there. And I think she had, she said she had to pay the whole year's rent in, uh, at the time of rental. Wow. So, and That's it was common. something, some astronomical amount. It was like. 40,000 or 90,000. It, it was extremely expensive. I don't remember the exact price, but uh, you know what what got me was she had to pay the whole thing up front. Now, you know, it wasn't monthly. Yeah, some of them do quarterly. Uh -huh. And you can also split it in half. But yeah, you don't pay by the month in Dubai. That would be extremely rare. Hmm. How, wow. how many, what, what do you mean you don't pay by the month? How often do you pay in, in Dubai? It's usually one once per year. You pay in advance one once per year. For your rent? But depending on yeah. where you're at, the landlord might agree to split it into two checks or four checks. Hmm. But you wouldn't go more. Four checks would be very liberal, uh, you know, for so that. You have to come up with a ton of money to get an apartment. Yeah, but most most of the time, the employer, uh, you know, pays that, and then you take it out of your paycheck during the year. So where did you say you are now? Are you in Kuala Lumpur? <clears throat> yeah, I am. Wow, okay. Now, if you could just, like, move your camera so you don't have the light in back of you, we could see your face. Oh, lo oh wow, that's nice. You got a pool what and a everything. Huh? Yeah. yeah. That's a pool. Yeah, we we got them now. They're very nice. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well. Uh, can can I come visit you? I'm on this. Can I come see you? You've been talking about going on vacation, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, dear. Guess where we're going? We're Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it it certainly looks to be very very nice. So anyway, yeah, it's nice. You know, the thing about it is, this is supposed to be a five-star hotel, but according to Dubai standards, it's like a three and a half, pushing a four. Uh, it's definitely not a five-star in my book. Uh, now, just so many little things, you know. Yeah. Du Dubai said in this documentary I saw, they they said that there was a hotel. It was more than five stars. It was like seven or. Uh, yeah, the Burj Al Arab. Is, is that yeah. is that it? A seven star, huh? Yeah. And the only one in the world. Oh, it's some, it's unbelievable. You get your own butler when yeah. you uh, check. You get a butler. <laughs> yeah. You get your, you get a butler. <laughs> and every all the uh, 
like the, the when you go into the bathroom, all the handles are made of gold, and like mm -hmm. the bathtubs are gold, and oh, it's unbelievable. unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Do they have a problem? People don't steal the towels there. They steal the handles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably make your money back. So anyway, yeah. I'm sorry for the late start, but I always wanted an hour and a half show anyway. Uh, but uh, and I bought a yeah. new, I mean, bought a new you device. In advance, I, I'm only here for, uh, you know, maybe 30 minutes or so because I, I'm house hunting. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, anyway, so I bought this thing. And I said, okay, it's a great idea, you know. And I hooked hard, it up. Is that I, a hardware switcher? It, it's it's a hard switcher to switch. Like if I want to go to, uh, well, I just had this set up. So if I want to go to the Ramble logo. I just go mm -hmm. boom, and then I push that. And if I want to go to me, I push that. But I don't have it set up right now to go to the panel. So I will have to do it that in another way by pushing that. Uh, but the, the thing was, I got it You're all. very I, pushy. I got it all set up with different things and so on, and I liked it so much. I decided to go order the one with fifteen buttons. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I go on the air tonight, and I can't get YouTube going. And I don't know if it's this or whatever. And I pulled this out, and it's still YouTube still isn't going. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, YouTube starts going. I think it was something with YouTube. If I'm not. Uh, when you were saying, is it something with YouTube, I checked YouTube to see if I could see something on YouTube. Now, it wasn't a broadcast. It was a recorded thing, but I was able to see it. But I that, don't know if that makes a difference. That's because it was difference. recorded, but live goes through a different server. Oh, okay. You know, so uh, I, I think that there was something terribly wrong with, uh, uh, with, with you. There might have been something wrong with YouTube tonight, for all I know. It could be this thing, but I don't know how it could be this thing. It was the Russians. Because everything else was working and so on. So I have to. Uh... By the way, I want to thank uh, Vernon. I had a nice chat with him earlier today talking about, oh, wow. about you know, uh, the things I have to look forward to. Uh, <laughs> you know. uh, but uh, uh, thank you very much, Vernon. I, it's really appreciated. And then Kevin... Uh, wrote me a huge note. Uh, you know, let me see here if I can uh, kind of just put it on the screen so that I can show people uh, how much he uh, how much he cared. Okay, let me see here. Come on, come on. Let me go somewhere else, and then I got to put this on the screen zero, and then I put this on one. There we go. And let me see if that's okay now. No? I don't get it. Mm. Well, okay. Oh, I see what the problem is. Can you give is. it there, its there own square? There, there we go. There we go. No, I, I, I this is a, something I don't do that often is when I go to the, the screen, okay? That's the screen. That's the whole letter that Kevin wrote me today about this. And mm -hmm. I, I, so I thank Kevin for going to that trouble for doing that, too. Uh, that was very nice. And Phil, of course, uh, have talked with him. And, uh, you know, it, it, you people have been very nice and responsive to my situation. And uh, while, uh, you know, all, all the words are nice, uh, nothing, and, and it calms me down to a certain extent, you know, uh, it's just my nature. Uh, I, I finally, I said something, I think, to Kevin in his, writing him back. And I said, I think the thing that bothers me is this is something I have no control over. And I think that's what it's about because years ago, I, you know, I talked to the guy who wrote Swimming to Cambodia. What was his name? Um, uh, anyway. Pol Pot? No, 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 no. Swimming to Cambodia. His name was... Um, no, the the uh, person at breakfast this morning, the server was from Cambodia. No, but that has nothing to do with swimming to Cambodia. <laughs> it was a one man show with, uh, yeah, Spalding Gray, uh, and I was interviewing Spalding Gray, and and I I said to him, uh, I said, do you you know, uh, one thing I hate about traveling because the book Swimming to Cambodia isn't about swimming to Cambodia. It's the title of the book, uh, and. Um, he, he, I said, you know, I don't like to travel because every time I go to travel, the two days beforehand, I'm a complete and utter mess. 
Nobody even wants to be around me because I'm worrying about every aspect of the trip. And he said, you know why? I said, why? He says, you're a control freak. Yep. He said, you want to imagine everything that can go wrong with the scenario of this trip so that if it does happen, you say, see, I told you so. You know, that you're he, must not he must not travel a lot. You know, well, I, I what, got it down to a he, science. He, he traveled a lot. That's what the book was about, Phil. <laughs> well, that's because he was sometimes, swimming. Sometimes there are people who know more than you do. He was just swimming. If he took the bus, it would be a different story. Anyway, the, you know, point, the, the, the bus point I'm Cambodia. making is, is that he said that that's, it's, you know, it, it, what, what you're doing is you're a control freak, and, and you're trying to control the situation by anticipating everything that could go wrong. So when I hit a situation like this, I anticipate everything that could go wrong. You know, every bad diagnosis, every diagnosis that's negative, you know, already I've got this, so I've got an aggressive cancer that will kill me in a month. You know, I mean, but that's, that's it's because uh, I, I have no control over this situation. You know. And you're also putting your, your life in the hands of somebody else and you yep. don't know whether to trust that person or not, you know. Like I'm getting, hey, I'm, I'm going to see a different I, doctor this week, and I don't know. He may be, he may be great, but I, I how do I know? I'm not a, 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 even my doctor didn't know whether my rolfer gave geez, me the name this morning. I, uh, yes, I, yeah. Tell and him. and then you did some research, and the guy turns out to be, uh, you know, next to a convict, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he, yeah, he, you know. he was, uh, he had a problem. Uh, it, uh, and I well, Alex, this, this he was a guest back. of Epstein. Uh, what? Somebody said something. Well, yeah, I, I was oh. just saying that. Yeah, this Alex, this gets down to this idea of, you know, it's sort of epistemological in a way. Like, how do we know what we know, and how do we how do we figure out what is real, what is true, and you know, and how do we discern that? And you're you're absolutely right. Like, this is one of the biggest questions I have all the time. It's like, even in my own profession, I can tell you that I'm not always 100%, you know? Um, there, are, I have good days, I have bad days. And I cannot always be at my peak. I just can't, you know? And and thank God I'm not a surgeon, <laughs> you know? Uh, if yeah. I were, I guess, I, you know, I'd want Dr. Strange uh, be, to, to be already because I, I don't know who can always be you know, at their tippy toppy best. And so I read a book called by Daniel Pink called uh, When, and he said that you have to get your uh, surgeries in the morning, like after, like between 10 and before lunch, something like that. Uh, and he had all these statistics that, you know, the mistakes that are made occurred in the afternoons and evenings, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, what you're going through, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, how do you figure it out. Now, you can use TripAdvisor on a hotel, for example, and you can read through, or if you're on Amazon, you can sort of use wisdom of the crowd. You can't really do that with doctors or, or dentists per se, because if anybody goes on there and says something real, you know, they'll probably get sued. Well, I mean, if the, you know, you go to these sites and they, you know, you go, okay, I have this doctor, Dr. So-and-so, and, -so, and uh, uh, reviews, okay? And so they go, okay, reviews, and then you go look at that. And, and they're all either really good, and maybe there's one bad one because the guy really hated what, he, what happened to him. But most of the time, it's like the doctor said to some friend, would you write up a nice review for me? <laughs> you know, so I don't know that those reviews are for real. You know, uh, I assume that what these people claim to be, they are. This guy I'm going to was back in 2008 for five straight years, named top, uh, one of the top urologists in New York by... A, a thing that they do every year here in New York, which is rating doctors in, uh, I think it's like what, New York Magazine or something like that. And um, Don't they pay to get in those? Huh? You know, you know, you know, the bachelor doctors and, and uh, bachelor lawyers, they, you know, they, they, they actually pay to uh, get in those uh, magazines, well, that, the best that, that, that's of. Not what I'm, but that's not what I'm talking about here. Well, yeah, the in best that case, of. The New York yeah. Magazine. Uh, picks every year top doctors, and there's a list of the top doctors, all right? And and this guy was listed as one of the top docs, okay? Uh, and for five straight years, a top urologist. 
But, you know, that was 2008. What's happened since? <laughs> You know, uh, he got out of jail. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what, what? Why? Why was he? Why was it for five straight years, and all of a sudden it wasn't? It. it wasn't happening anymore for him. Couldn't practice in prison. Well, yeah, I can tell you that. I can tell you the answer to that. Yeah, and it. Uh, I mean, in in my line of work, you what you see is people will sort of uh, turn on the afterburners up mm. until they get to the position that they want. And then once they have the position they want, you know, they can sort, they can rest on their laurels. And it's, so they, they try so hard to succeed that after a while you get burned out and you just, you can't keep up the same level, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, but nevertheless, I mean, he did get those a appellations and he's a, he's an assistant professor at uh, Mount Sinai and, you know, I mean. Only assistant? Uh, or uh, associate professor or something. I don't know. He he's, but he has a nice set of, he has a nice set of credentials. Okay, look at the credentials on that guy. That's you know. what we do until you get to full. I'm full, but some people stop at associate because going associate to full just you basically give up your life for some years. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I had. To but do. but you know, so I mean, I assume this guy is good. My doctor said he was good, but then again, my doctor said the other guy was good, and he even uses him as his urologist. But he says, I don't know. I've never had any real urology problems, you know. And so I don't know whether. And I said, is he any good? And he said, yeah, I don't know. He says, I don't know any good. Really, most urologists are crazy. <laughs> he, he said, in the profession, they're the most looked upon, down, down upon of all the, the doctors out there. And I would imagine they would be because I'm not, I wouldn't choose as my, uh, as my uh, uh, profession, a job where my main job is sticking my finger up people's asses. You've you seen know. one inch, you've seen them all. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And, and, and in the end, they're very protective of each other. It's a dirty crack, but someone's got to clean it. Yeah. But anyway, so, I mean, I'm going to go to this new guy, and I'm going to going for a second opinion, but I'm going to tell him also I'm looking for somebody to replace the doctor I've got because I just don't trust him. Uh, yeah. You know, he was okay when there was nothing wrong. Now, if there's something maybe wrong, I'd like to have some professionals involved, and not. Go with and then gut. you have to hope that the people that you ask are not somehow connected to him. Well, if they're connected to him, then fuck them. I'll find out soon enough. You know, but you know, yeah. on the other hand, he, they may know who he is and go, yeah, well, he doesn't. Have, you know, think to themselves, he doesn't have that good a reputation or whatever. Uh, I mean, what all uh, the only thing that scared me about this guy is that his mm -hmm. office is filthy. You know, yeah, they and, stay away. And, and they're gonna yep. go. They're gonna sh go shove a thing up my ass and and take a biopsy in in in, uh, that, in that atmosphere. In fact, my, do my doctor who knows that office, I said, well, you know, his place is kind of filthy. And he goes, yeah. And he said, so where is he gonna do the uh, the biopsy? And I said, in his office. He says, really? That was my doctor's reaction. <laughs> You know, and most doctors can do these biopsies in their offices, but they're surgically clean offices, you know? Correct. And this guy doesn't even, he doesn't wear a white jacket or anything like that. You know, he's got his sleeves rolled up and his desk is like got all kinds of shit all over it, you know? I mean, it, it's, I, I think it's important if you're a doctor that the appearance that you have yeah. is very important. Sometimes if I go into a place and it's a little too nice, I begin yeah. to worry about that too. Like, you yeah. know, he, he's not You very... should have got the first indication when you saw the shrunken heads on a stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was not, you know, so, I mean, uh, I, and Vernon agreed with me that I really probably shouldn't trust this doctor. Plus, well, you needed a second opinion, like you said, too, yeah. which I, I would definitely agree with you. Well, with second opinions, um, I imagine, am I right, you can say to the doctor, well, I, I'd, I'd like to get rid of my old doctor. Could you be my doctor? And they'll, yeah, they'll kind of accept you, won't they? I mean, they, they, they don't do that on... Neil Armstrong needed to do that. Huh? What? Neil Armstrong should have done that. What do you mean? Oh, is that... He should have got, gotten a second opinion. Why? You didn't read that story about uh, the family getting paid six million dollars? No. Yeah, Neil Armstrong. That's when he died. It was uh, doctor negligence. He went to a small-time hospital oh. in Cincinnati. Really? And later, 
now they have experts all over the world who have chimed in and said, oh, we would have done it like this and like that. They shouldn't have done it like that. And so he, hindsight. Well, all, yep. uh, yeah, well, but, yeah, but what I'm asking, yeah, but what I'm asking is, an from an expert. Yeah, what I'm asking is just because you uh, are going for a second opinion doesn't mean you can't say to him, well, listen, I'd really like to have you be my doctor. And he would probably accept me, right? Well, yeah, that's what I did, you, and and sometimes they're reluctant to do it, but you ask them again. Well, I had that happen. Why was he reluctant? Well, because it was a situation with my situation. It was a situation where the first doctor screwed up, oh. and he told me to go back and have my first doctor fix it. Oh, and okay. And then, and then I didn't <laughs> want him to. Oh, I wanted yeah. the second but I mean, doctor in my, to fix in my, it. In my oh, case, oh, because I, 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 got, I have this one doctor and I'm going for another opinion, I don't think he'd refuse being my doctor. No, he would probably, he would, you just ask him if you would take care of the situation and say, I'd like you to take care of it for me. Will you do it? What do you mean take care of it? You want, you want him to, to proceed with the procedure. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, I'm sure he's not going to send me back to the other doctor because I don't want to go back to him. No, you want a second opinion. Will you take care of it for me? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, Can what, I say something? What? Yeah. When my mom had colon cancer, I could say that the first hospital we took her to was Presbyterian Jamaica. Yeah. And they were going to do the operation, Alex. They wanted to keep her there to do it. So my sister and brother and me said, listen, we're getting a second opinion. What the doctors there wanted to do, if they would have did the operation, he explained to my brother that she would have had a bag for the rest of her life. So my brother's like, you're not cutting my mother up without getting a second opinion. So my sister knew somebody in Sloan, so she got her in to see her doctor. And they did the operation there, no bag. He did it. If we would have kept her there, she would have had the colostomy bag the rest of her life. So you got to get the second opinion. Yep. They, were ready to put, they were ready to go into her the following week. They but, asked, my brother's but, like, you're not touching my mother but, yet. But, but we got all her records and we got her the hell out of there. But what I'm saying is the second opinion people Wait a minute. Yeah. Is, uh, like, well, Jeff that, is here. Us. I'm looking for Jeff. Where, most where, doctor, where? most good doctors will respect a second opinion. Yeah. Uh, it, it, most doctors will respect a second opinion. Yes, a good doctor will respect a second opinion. What do you mean, the doctor you're trying to get away from? The original doctor and the second opinion doctor will both respect that. A second opinion, yeah. And if yep. I say to my second opinion, doctor, if they're good doctors, well, I like what you're saying, and I feel confident, more confidence in you than I do in my doctor. Will you be my doctor? He'll say okay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm I, I shouldn't worry that I'm then going to be without a doctor because I ain't going oh, back oh, to the oh, doctor. Hell no. My hell mother no. was like that too. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so they Not will. At all. Yeah. So they will. They will. He will take me on. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't. You know, I don't want him to tell me. Anything but what he thinks is, if he says I need a biopsy, then we go do it. You know, yeah. That's, but I don't yeah. want I don't want to do it in this other doctor's office because I said last night I kind of when I thought about it I know what a back alley abortion must feel like. So you have a good, you see, you have a good sense, but you see, you have a good sense there. Say if I was in a doctor's office and you were there with me, you'd probably tell me, hey, listen, Tony, I'm getting a bad vibe from this guy. You got to get another opinion. Well, so yeah, you, at the you end of the day, your go with your gut. My if wife, this, my wife, who went, who my wife, my, doctor, my wife, who went with me the other day, uh, yeah. said, "I don't like this place, and I don't like yeah, this you, doctor. I don't like what I'm know. seeing." And just, you know what, Alex? I'll mm -hmm. tell you what. That's a good feeling too when your wife is there and she don't have a good feeling about it because my wife was there during my situation and she picked out most of the stuff. Okay. Do you want to know what the worst part is about this doctor? The He's a Trump one? supporter. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there yeah, you go. I figured it. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't argue with him because I don't argue with somebody who sticks his finger up your ass. You know. That's right. You know, you just, you just, oh, it's okay, thank you. It's your opinion. And I just want to, and that doesn't, uh, it also doesn't uh, tone how I feel about the doctor. I mean, if he's a good doctor, hell, I don't care if you voted for Trump. If you saved my life, you saved my life. That's true. I wouldn't That's care right. That. You yep. know, so, uh, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, and I'm sorry, folks, if once again we're talking about this shit, but, you know, it's preoccupying <laughs> me, and uh, that's, that's the way it goes. Um, uh, Jeff and I and his lovely wife, Pamela, and Marjorie are going to have lunch on, what, Sunday, right? That's right. That's right. They're coming into the city, and we're going to have spend a little time together, which is, is nice. You can plan on me talking about this to you. Anyway, oh, yeah. we'll, do, we'll do therapy too. We'll do therapy. 
<laughs> you know, everybody tells me, don't worry about this. You know, I mean, uh, uh, Kevin wrote me and he said, look, uh, this, this procedure these days is, is, is quite solvable. You know, yeah, I think the, wor the worst part <clears throat> is not knowing. Yeah. 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 Once you know. It's fine yeah. to be yeah. 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 I mean, I And, and Vernon great. told me, you know, he went through, well, he went through nine weeks of, uh, of radiation. I've heard it's more like seven, could be six. Uh, there are some faster versions of the same thing. I just, I, all I can think of, here's me, okay, is if I have to go for nine weeks, say, up to Mount Sinai, which is where they probably do it for me because he's associated with Mount Sinai, and I'm closest to Mount Sinai, uh, I would take a cab up there, and every day it would cost me at least uh, 15 bucks. So every week I'm going to be spending like $75 <laughs> to go get radiated for, for nine <laughs> weeks. But I figure it's... You know, and, and I, there's no insurance for that, by the way. You'll uh, be glowing. Yeah, well, you know. But uh, it's the good kind of radiation, Alex. Yes. Hey, it's, you know, yeah. it's worth it if you're doing it to get yourself healthy because I drove over 90 miles one way to go to the doctor I wanted to go to. Yeah. From where I and, live and, here all the way up to Oakland. And by the way, Kevin said that he had uh, an elevated PSA, I guess, and they gave you a biopsy. And they gave Twice. you... They gave you another one the next year. I'm avoiding. No, it wasn't I'm the next year, but it was a few years later. A few years it later. Much. Why? Yeah. Because you're five years later. Because your PSA didn't go down, right? It went down and then it went back up. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm completely I'm, avoiding the issue. Huh? What? I'm just avoiding it because I know, like, five or six years ago, I had a. You know, doctor tell me I had to do X, Y, Z, and I was on some pill, but it, it made me very anxious. I didn't like the pill. I just stopped it. Now, I, I probably still have the issue, but I just don't. I'm just avoiding it. Well, I don't know. I think, you know, uh, as much as we like to think that medicine is this wonderful science and boy, doctors really know what they're doing. I think they're as mystified as anybody else. Uh, I, I don't get the feeling of great confidence in the medical industry. Uh, yeah. And that there, uh, you know, I, I think if I were to come back 50 years from now and look at the situation with prostate cancer, everybody will be laughing at PSA tests like it was some witch doctor rattling bones, you know. Yeah. Because... Uh, here's a test that they say, well, if your, if your PSA goes up, you might have cancer. What's the chance of the cancer? Well, about 8%. What? 8%? That's so what you're saying is, is that you're relying on a test that's largely false because once in a while it's right. <laughs> it's kind of like... False positive. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a stopped clock. One, twice a day it's right. Uh, and, and uh, you know... Uh, people who go and do the uh, the uh, biopsies, 92% of all biopsies come out either nothing or a very localized, slow-growing cancer. All right. That's what my mom had. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so there's a question of all all this uh, of uh, doing something that's unnecessary, but also putting people in a state of mind that terrorizes them, which this has yeah. with me. I mean, I can't tell you what the, you know knowing about this has done to me. Also, if I, maybe I could have gotten it a little faster, but my doctor said I'm on vacation for ten days, so we'll do it in a month. I mean, wow. same thing they did to me. Yeah, and then you got to wait for the results. Yeah, yeah, and you you know, and I asked my doctor, I my my regular physician, I said, if I wait a while to get this thing, if I shop around for doctors and try and find the right doctor. Uh, is, is, am I risking my life by doing that? And he says, absolutely not. He said, no, no. I've seen guys with this. He's slow growing. Don't worry about it, you know. Uh, but yeah, because uh, worrying could make it worse. What? If what? you worry about it, you're going to stress make it worse. Oh, I'm sure. But how, how do I not stress about it? I'm me, you know. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, yeah. I'm in, and, and, and I, the other thing... The other thing was that I was complaining about being tired and all that stuff, you know, the old man stuff. I was mm -hmm. getting tired and everything else. And the first thing my other doctor wants to do is start shooting me with testosterone. 
So I started taking testosterone, and well, I go to my urologist, and he says, "Holy crap, your PSA is gone shooting through right the roof." Yeah. Is that how you got that beard? Hold on. Yeah. yeah, that's why I turned <laughs> no, white. No, yeah. testosterone. It Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer feeds on it's testosterone. Yes. That's it why. Fires everything back up. That's why so we're one of the stop one of that. Yeah. Now I'm feeling tired all the time again, mm -hmm. and you know. I haven't gone to my urologist for a while, like Bree says. I'm trying to avoid it, but I know I gotta go. Yeah, but and so, it's yeah. Just yeah, it's all crazy. It's all crazy. But anyway, yeah, so I, I'll probably go and it'll be fine. But I'll still be tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we just should call this Alex's waiting room. You know. We can Next. Read the magazine. Oh, this other doctor, by the way, also average waiting time when you get to him. You get, I always get places on time. Show up on time is about an hour. You know, now I, I don't mind that the guy likes to spend time being good with his patients, but I just think he overbooks, you know, and oh, my, uh, my doctor, up in, huh? my doctor up in Oakland, we used to get there for a 10 o'clock appointment and we were lucky if we saw him by two o'clock. What? Oh, yeah. Wow. Lucky. I would get up and walk out and say, fuck you. I'm Me never coming oh, back no. here. Oh, again. no, this guy was the best. And I would wait. See, some of these guys think they're Jesus Christ, these doctors. But the, this guy was. You remember that scene in The Sopranos? He fixed me. Well, yeah, what, 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 what scene in The Sopranos, Bree? There were uh, Tony, his uh, uncle Junior needs to like have a doctor call him back. And the doctor never calls him back. So Tony goes out to the golf course, <laughs> pays him a visit. And all of a sudden, he calls him back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that would be like every Somebody doctor. <laughs> Maybe that's what I need. I, I still never heard I'm back. I remember the last time a doctor called me back. I, never, I still never heard back from um, uh, what's the big cancer hospital here in town? Uh, Sloan. Sloan Kettering. Uh, they never got back to me, even though they said they would get back to me. Because one of the reasons I think they just weren't interested is I have not been diagnosed with cancer. Oh, yeah. My doctor thinks I might I have cancer, truth. but I haven't been diagnosed with it. And they don't want to hear from people who haven't been diagnosed with cancer because the sign on the wall says Sloan yeah. Kettering Cancer Center. You know, a woman it's that just... answered the phone heard your show. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you not calling back. Yeah. You know, but I, I just, uh, I, you know, I'm, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's unnerving. It's it, unnerving. It, 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 it is. It's very unnerving. Yes, yeah, so uh, I mean, I would be a nervous wreck. I wouldn't be sleeping, me. Hmm? I'd be well, well, once you get a path like and you figure out what's going on, then it's a little better. But you know, it well, just gets there. You know, if I knew that I that I had to have some kind of uh, radiation, uh, like uh, Vernon, then let's do it. Vernon uh, has been cancer free yeah. now for what eight years, Vernon? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Vernon, did you look into that um, uh, that other kind of radiation that's like a pinpoint radiation that David Hajek got? Uh, it's called proton therapy. Yeah, I was reading that in Sloan. I was well, telling you, it wasn't it. around back then. It wasn't oh, exactly. Proton, proton therapy wasn't around back. Of course, then. we it's haven't heard fact. from David Hajek, so we don't know how well uh, it the worked. Proton torpedo. <laughs> you know, they, they do that well, in Sloan. Vernon. I was my, reading. Yeah, my uh, second opinion said that it was un it, it, they don't have as much results on it, and they're afraid maybe it would come back. For instance, Marjorie had a friend that had the seeds, the radioactive seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't get that because my uh, prostate was too large. But uh, didn't Marjorie's friend get the seeds? Uh, cancer went away, and then it came back, and he and it killed him. Yeah, uh, because it came back much faster. Yeah, yes, I know somebody yes, who I know somebody who uh, used to work for me, and he used the seeds. The, it's and, the baki or something. Yeah, and uh, it's been, I would say, at least ten years, and he's still doing fine. So, really, yeah, and, uh, and Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani had the seeds. Well, uh, what can uh, I couldn't get the seeds, but uh, you know. When I heard about uh, Marjorie's friend, I said, well, and, and when the well, doctor well, just said because somebody that got that could happen. Just, uh, Phil, just because somebody got the seeds and then died later on doesn't it's mean that that's work. the usual case of things, you know. No, it but my, uh, my yeah. second opinion doctor uh, said that that's, that's a possibility with the proton therapy because they don't know, it, like with the seeds, 
sometimes it comes back, especially with the seeds. Not always, but sometimes. And they said they don't have enough data well, on the proton. If it comes back, yet. then you take the prostate out. I don't know that you can. Uh, what? It's I, in pot. I, it's I, it, it's welded in there once you use the seeds. You know. No, I, I I'm not sure if the spread of the cancer. You know, I don't know. Uh, I would think that they have to give you chemo. Uh, but, At the end of the day, anything can happen to anybody. Yeah, yeah, it's not a guarantee. Well, we've lost a lot of people listening to this program because we're not talking about upbeat <laughs> stuff. So, fuck all of you out there. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should turn off the video feed. Uh, Let's talk about the death penalty. Did you hear about that? Well, oh, yeah, we, we mentioned this last we'll night. We go How ahead. about the wall? They're going to get the billions to build 100 more oh, miles. Sure. Supreme Court. Trump wins. All the Supreme Court said, Phil, was that the people who brought that lawsuit did not have a standing. That's all that was. Well, are they going to release the money? You're well, listening they to said, Mr. They Bush. said that they had, no, they had no standing to tell them they couldn't transfer the money. Well, and who was that? The, was the Sierra it Club. Sierra, Sierra Club. Uh, well, wait, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I didn't, I didn't hear really? about this development. So the Supreme Court said... Uh, they ruled in Trump's favor, but uh, they're also they saying there may be more lawsuits. They dismissed the lawsuit without signatures, saying that the uh, plaintiff did not have standing to bring the lawsuit in the first place. I see. It okay, so four. so the, no, so it was, it, so, it, was, it was five to four, but there were, there was no signature. In other words, what you're saying is it wasn't a ruling; it was a refusal to take the case. Uh, but no. how come they're going to allow allow Trump to, to transfer the money is what they said. <clears throat> you know, yes. Trump... Oh, that means you know, hey, tr hey, hey uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, Trump can add to the national debt all he wants. Uh, I, oh, no, I, he's I, just taking it from money already allocated for uh, the uh, starving kids in China. No, he's taking it from uh, uh, He's taking it from military bases that need to have buildings repaired. Yeah. What are starving kids? Oh, he's taking food from their poor mouths. Well, one of the places they're taking it from is uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, which is right near me. And there was a school that was going to be fixed up with some of that money that he's now not going to get. Uh, you should have let him build the wall before he needed the money. The wall's a waste of time, Phil. A waste of money, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so, uh, so, so uh, he's going to be able to build, uh, well, that, how much can he build for a billion dollars? Uh, it's more than a billion and it's say a hundred miles. hundred miles. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and I, and there was a, a Homeland Security website that says that they've repaired or built 52 miles so far. What a waste of fucking money, huh? That was money already allocated for that purpose though. Hmm. What, the to, to, to repair? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, so he's going to get to build it. Wow. He must well, be so, so happy. So far, he might get another well, lawsuit. To me, to me, this just reinforces the concept that the current administration are just a bunch of bunch of mean bastards. They're bringing back the death penalty for one reason and one reason only, and that's so they can look macho. Really? Okay. Wow, that's just my opinion. Well, no, I think that uh, they're, they're, Timothy they're, McVeigh shouldn't die. He's one of the ones that it's going to be put to death. Timothy McVeigh is going to be put to death. Phil, Timothy, well, let me get this straight. McVay? Timothy McVeigh is going to be put to death. I, I thought that I heard that on the news. Yeah. yeah. That, do, do, uh, you, do, do you know who Timothy McVeigh was, Phil? Yeah, he was the guy that blew up the. Mm -hmm. uh, a uh, Moro uh, yeah, yeah. building do you in know Oklahoma what, City. Do you know what the current situation is with Timothy McVeigh? Uh, no, but the news said. Would somebody that he care was one to tell ones? Phil? Uh, he's I think dead he's, dead. Dead. he's dead, Phil. He was executed. I remember oh. that. When? A while ago. He's oh, been gone about eight at least, okay? So he's not going to call the show anymore? <laughs> no. <laughs> Making bombs in heaven. <laughs> to blow up a fucking cloud. Come on, Timothy. Well, he better be hell why did they off. say that that he was one of the ones that was going to get executed? Well, whatever source you got was wrong, Phil. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, time for a drink again. I know that's shocking. Well, time for a drink. 
Yeah. The time for a drink is right. Yeah. Hey, is this clean enough? Hmm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, anyway, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, what can I say? Phil, Phil, uh, this was a big drinking night for any of you. Yeah. Uh, who who want to believe uh, you know who want uh, to drink when Phil is wrong? Timothy and, McVeigh is dead. Oh God! Oh. Yeah, he was so, so young. Yep, 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 yep. Phil, wow, you you really. You're I thought really... you made a good point the other night when you said that the uh, the pro life Republicans want to put everybody to, to death now. Yeah, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I thought they were releasing 3,000 people from jail, and uh, 56 of them were murderers, and 900... Oh, that's your president. Yeah, well... Yeah. He's, uh, he's given them a, a, a chance, you know, to... There you go. To ...get back out into society. Maybe they want Him to sell Kardashian. carpet. Kardashian. Yeah. You know, if they want to sell carpet, then I, I, I welcome it. <laughs> Well, to me, the, the whole thing about the death penalty is there's such bullshit. People who advocate for the death penalty say that one of the reasons they advocate for the death penalty is that it's a deterrent. Well, guess what? We're at an all-time low on murder statistics in this country without the death penalty for the last eight years. So explain that. He's going to fix that. It's never been a deterrent. Nope. They're going to do it if they do it. They think they can get away with it. They always think they can get away with it. Yeah. Clearly insane. You know, there was uh, 16 or 18 Marines that were uh, bringing, uh, for $3,000 a piece, they were uh, bringing illegal aliens across the border mm -hmm. uh, down in San Diego area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, do you think that they thought that they could get away with it? You know, that they'd never get caught? That nobody would say anything out of 18 people that got arrested? You know, that... That's the criminal mentality. People think that it, it'll never be them. You know, oh, I can kill this guy and I'll, I'll get away with it. It's the other guy that'll go to the death chamber. Weren't there some, uh, also some Marines in, um, I think it was Syria, who were just uh, uh, yeah, arrested uh, and sent back to the United about. States for raping people? Uh, there was, I know that the 18 of them in San Diego uh, are are going to be tried, but that was for smuggling. Uh, I don't. Uh, no, oh, no, the, no, there was no, a SEAL was... team that was sent home. Uh, a, a Navy SEAL team, I think, seventeen guys. Uh, and do you, does anybody know why they were? Uh, they were uh, accused of rape. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know, this is really going too far with Trump giving a sense of permission. I don't know that it's Trump's fault that people would do Everything things like that. Everything is Trump's fault. You got, you, you got to be able to make your own decisions and be responsible for the decisions what, that you what make. What morning are you going to wake up, Phil, and realize that Trump is a is an asshole who's ru ruining, literally ruining this country? No, I'm not a victim, and and uh, you know I have a choice as to how, which direction I go, the things I do and don't do. And whether I think they're right and wrong. And so does everybody else. And you can't blame it on Trump. No, I can't? No. I'll blame everything on Trump. <laughs> of course. He used to blame everything on Obama. Yeah. Yeah, he <laughs> blames everything on other people. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so sick of him trying to somehow get even with Obama because Obama ribbed him at a, uh, at a correspondence dinner, which is what you do. You know, Trump doesn't that, he won't go to the Trump. He won't go to the correspondence dinners for a very simple reason. He doesn't want to be joked about. He yeah, takes he himself. Like the fake he news. takes himself yeah. way too seriously. Yeah, you're right about that. He does. Well, he takes himself too serious. He yeah, doesn't like. He doesn't like those people. It's like the, my high school reunion. I never. I don't like those. He people. He doesn't like them because there. he, he like his <laughs> dislike comes out of the fear that they're going to kid him. You know, and now he can't show up because he's been so daunting against the press that it, you know that he he's going to be a room that's ho in a room that's hostile to him. Before they would have been just jovial and wanting to make jokes about him, just like they you know they made r big ribbing jokes about Obama when he was president. 
That's what the nature of the dinner is. It's an evening of uh, good spirits and making fun of each other. But you've got a president who has absolutely nothing in his mind that says, I can be made fun of. I think they should rent the uh, conference center over at the uh, golf course in New Jersey, and then you'll have to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Only if they have a wedding. And, you know, uh, he, he went into some, some uh, uh, people in New Jersey that were getting married, and they, they were hoping that he was going to come. They sent him, like, 200 invitations. <laughs> and he show, and uh, the gal uh, and the guy, they had such New Jersey accents I mean, it, it was it was like oh, yeah, watching I The Sopranos. <laughs> it was pretty good. Where the fuck is the dessert? Dropping <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't it's, steal it's, the envelopes. It's, it's a bad wedding. This, Take the money. Yeah. Real estate agent. Yeah. You know, oh, it, I don't yeah. like. It. Some of these real estate agents are really rude. You know, they. I'm like at, asking about this. I gotta go here in a, in a minute or two, Alex. Um, mm -hmm. But like, I'm asking about. This uh, this property, and inquiring, and the first thing that he's like, uh, which country are you from? You know, and he's like, uh, deposit, two month deposit, uh, advance rental, Tennessee agreement, cash, no problem, right? And it's like, uh, the first thing I would want to know is, you know, how are you doing? And welcome, and uh, you know, what are you, what kind of thing you're looking for? Do you think this is not? Can you afford it? You know, <laughs> you know. Well, so, that's called qualifying they, the customer, but it they can ask doesn't. those questions over there, huh? Yeah, I said good day. Forget it. It's not for us because I want a person who cares about, you know, asking about what my requirements are, not what he's getting from it immediately. You know? Hey, Bree, uh, does your employer recommend maybe a realtor that you could work with? It's pronounced they realtor, did, Phil. I to tell you the truth, she, she is really bad because she basically says, okay, there's a couple of expensive high rises right next to here, so you want to go there, right? Well, I'd like to look around and see what, oh, I'll get back to you. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm a little busy. We'll message each other. So yeah. it's like either you take, you take the expensive one next door you know, or I don't want to talk to you. That's hey, kind of let's do lunch. <laughs> we'll do <Yeah>. lunch. <laughs> so it's really crazy. I, I've just been messaging them like a million people. There are two main websites, and I just like I'm interested. I'm interested in this. I'm interested in this. Interested, and then I just <laughs> WhatsApp, and eventually, hopefully, something will come through. I'm going to look at three places today, and I'm starting to get stressed about it because I've, I got to start work next week, and uh, yeah, so. Not a fun thing. So, you know, Alex, I hope you uh, figure out your rental thing and you stay there because uh, I haven't had to rent in 13, 14 years because the company always paid for everything. So yeah. I never had to think about it. For 14 years, I haven't had to go through this process. You know? How come you didn't negotiate this this time then? You well, they the don't. They just don't. They don't do it. I, I get a uh, I get an allowance, a monthly allowance, and I did negotiate that. I got an extra. You know, 125, 150 dollars, uh, you know, per month. So I did negotiate a little bit, but now that I know the market better, I should have negotiated for two, three hundred more. But yeah. you know, they come back and they say, "Oh, well, you know, your boss is only getting this amount, so we can't give you more than what your boss is getting." So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he rented 14 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bree, is yeah. this a university that you're going to work for? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's well, education group. So, yeah, uh, is but, it the uh, Columbia School of Broadcasting? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the Gabnet yeah. School of Broadcasting. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so it's crazy. You know, I I would prefer to have a house because I've been living in a high rise for a, well, ten, ten, you know, kind of a high rise for a while. But the problem is, is no one can give me a straight answer as to whether or not it's a safe neighborhood. You know, some people say yes, some people say no. Some people mm. are in between, so it's like, okay. Can you look up the crime stats uh, or go to the local I, PD and ask them? Well, <laughs> you can look them up, but, yeah, I thought about going there and asking them uh, if I could find it. But, I, you know, again, I don't know if they're going to share that information. It's not like I can file a Freedom of Information Act. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I suppose, you know, what I, what I thought I could do is I could get the landlord to uh, agree to put in some – you know, precautionary measures like uh, motion de motion detector lights in the front and back and um, that kind of a thing, you know, and a new lock on the gate, you know, this kind of thing. 
Yeah. So that's that's my plan. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna. And it's also crazy because the agents you can never tell. Like there are a couple of places that I've contacted, and one guy was showing it, but then I contacted and it's another woman. You know who's something. Showing it. This is getting like, really dull. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm leaving. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it, I mean, I I appreciate I appreciate that you got problems with it, but basically you're talking about stuff that's involved in your situation and there are not a lot of people it applies to out there you know well, everybody's yeah. had to rent a place yeah uh, but, you know at one time but, or another you know you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm not trying to insult you or anything like that that's not, yeah i know that's not I know the, what you're saying. you know uh but it's just that uh uh well no there are enough people listening i mean maybe go on with it maybe i'm wrong you know because i'm i'm <laughs> you know uh, it's been so long since well, I've had to rent a place here. Phil asked me, it's about 800 to a thousand dollars. You can get a decent place. If you're willing to spend 1,500 or 2000, you can get an excellent place. And if you spend 3000, you can have a whole house with a built in pool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and do you have to pay the uh, one year up front, mm -hmm. like Dubai or, uh, yeah. here this month? They, you have to pay first months, last months and utilities, yeah. uh, utility deposit. And uh, it's it, but it's hard though because I just landed here, you know, three days ago. It's not yeah. like I carry five thousand dollars cash on, you know. <laughs> yeah. I have to, and and then there's a whole bunch of other things like uh, my daughter's schooling. I have to pay a deposit, enrollment fee, uh, deposit, then half the tuition. Uh, so you know, it's like that's kind of crazy. But I got myself into it, you know. I I thought because the thing with Dubai was that. Uh, they had extremely long uh, notification periods to get out of contract. It was six yeah. months, and every six months. So there's twice a year, and if you missed one, then technically it's six plus five. It's a, you know, it's like almost eleven months if you miss a, or nine. I forget. Anyway, yeah. it, I, you know, and I was done with there, and here it's just a two month period. So if I don't like it, you can get I, out. Two months, I can get out. Yeah, but uh, you know. Anyway, I got to skedaddle okay. because uh, they're going to come in and clean the room. Well, and call, I've get call to us soon and let show. us see more of uh, let's uh, see more of Kuala Lumpur. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, do it on your phone when you walk around. Show us the apartment you're looking at. We're excited for <laughs> you. I think you'll be off uh, by the time I might get there. I got because I got to get there at noon, uh, and then I've got a couple of showings this afternoon. And yeah. uh, but I'll let you know on uh, okay. let's see your Tuesday, my Wednesday, okay, of next week. Anyway, yeah. we'll, we'll see you then. Okay, thanks a Take lot. Care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, our boy, um, uh, there. Okay, anyway, we're back to six people our, here. Our boy in Kuala Lumpur, uh, yes, <laughs> that's right, Kuala Lumpur. So, anyway, um what else is happening in the news? Is there anything really mm -hmm. amazing? Because I, you know, all they all they keep talking about is uh, there's still, you know, I, I, and I, I may be wrong. Uh, and uh, uh, is Char? I thought Charlie was here. Was I'm here. Oh, where are He's you? Here. Who said I'm not here? Oh, I don't Check have it. your picture up. That's the reason why. My picture's Let's there. Oh, there you are. Okay, there you are. <laughs> I'm out of it tonight, just totally out of it, because the whole show started off fucked. Uh, but um, um, I know that you're for impeachment, you know? Yep. But I just, you know, I just think it, 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 they should give up on it at this point, you know? Just get on with making your case to the American <clears throat> public. Uh, and I don't think that... It's going to help anything at this point. I mean, if you if you did this so, several years ago, uh, you could call it a slap on the hand because he's not going to get he's not going to get thrown out of office because he'll go over to the mm -hmm. Senate and those senators will be in lockstep. Okay. So the president's above the law. Nixon was right. Well, uh, well, the president is above the law. Yes. Get used to it. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, it's a special pass. Huh? It's a special pass. Oh yeah. And One absolutely. year president. Yeah. Now, if they try to impeach him, mm -hmm. and it goes to the Senate, and they vote it down, is there mm -hmm. double jeopardy in impeachments? Can they try no. it again on his next term? 
No, because he's not in any jeopardy of going to jail from impeachment. There's no double jeopardy there. Uh, well, I don't. I'm not sure. I, I didn't know. Well, I just think you know. I mean, uh, there, there was a a problem with uh, uh, you know, Ocasio Cortez met with um, met with Nancy Pelosi today, and they tried to make nice nice. It doesn't seem like they exactly made nice nice though. Uh, it, it seems like they just decided to agree to disagree, and uh, I think probably what Pelosi said to her was, listen, don't rattle the cage too much because we have to look united, you know? And, uh, and, and while I do appreciate what Ocasio-Cortez is doing, and I think it's needed because I think there needs to be a conversation within the Democratic Party about sub substance of the party, uh, uh, you, you don't want to do it to where everybody looks at this and goes, oh, uh, these people are, uh, these people are, uh, what do you call it? Uh, partisans. Partisans, you know. Uh, it's just not, that's not right. So uh, it, 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 I just think that at this point, going after impeachment is only going to help Trump rather than hurt him. Yeah. And go ahead and impeach. Well, Connell's not doesn't care anything about being looked at as partisan. Well, Connell it's all about Mitch. I know, but partisan. but let me let me ask you this. Um, it's about Moscow, Mitch, right? Yeah. It, it, it's about it's about Mo Moscow, Mitch. Is that what you call him? Yeah. 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 They're calling him Moscow, <laughs> Mitch now. Yeah. Why do you call him that? Well, because he's going along with everything that. Uh, uh, Trump has wanted to do with uh, Putin and the Russians, plus yeah. he's negotiating a Russian oligarch bringing an aluminum plant to Kentucky. Hmm. And plus, he keeps fighting any kind of money going to, to shore up our election so the Russians can't hack in again. Exactly. Yep. He's blocked they, No, that. do you know what they wanted? They wanted paper ballots and... and sure, yeah, what's wrong with that? Yeah, what's wrong with that? That's, That's what we need. boondoggle. No, it's not. In Kentucky, they still have paper backups, Phil. They use machines to count the ballots, but they got papers that they can go yeah. back and double check. I, I, believe in pa I believe in paper backups, but if you say if we have paper ballots, it's not going to be. Well, not, they, it's a backup. You let me finish, Phil. Yeah. Well, well wait a minute. What you had to say was more important than I did, so go ahead. I just said it's a backup. It's not, a, it's not the main ballot, mm -hmm. the paper. Well, some I think we will... should all get purple ink on our fingers every time yeah. we vote. <laughs> well, it's not the worst idea in the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm waiting for Phil to we'll talk because just... everything he says is so important. Go ahead, Phil. Oh, uh, uh, I already did. I just said it's paper backup. You said I, I'm all in favor. We had already of... said it was paper backup before you said it was paper backup. Oh, so you're really quick on the trigger. No, not me. Somebody else said it. I yeah. said it. Yeah. But apparently you only listen to yourself. Uh, anyway, the point is, the point is that, um, uh, uh, you know, people say, oh, paper ballot said that would, that would solve the problem. It never solved the problem. We had rigged elections when there were paper ballots, except the paper ballots wound up in a lake somewhere. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, I don't think there's any sure way. If people want to scam voting, they're going to be able to do it, whether it's the Russians or whether it's Mitch McConnell. You know, we just shouldn't make it so easy for them with the Internet connections. Yeah, an 11 year old could dump a bunch of ballots in a river. Well, you know, in, in a lot of ways, I would rather see us vote via computer. I would like to. Because I think more people would vote. You know, uh, and I think you can do, you can come up with systems. I mean, come on, don't we? I just can't, can't we believe when the votes are ready. I, mean, I, can, I can't, can't, I can't believe that vote. a company like like Facebook, who has some of the best computer minds working their system and, and having helped create their system and all the things that it does and so on, somehow can't find a way to keep the Russians out. You know, it just it boggles my mind. You know, you can build virtually hack-proof systems, but nobody does. Yeah. You know. Right. 
And and so, uh, am I supposed to feel sorry for, for <coughs> Facebook? Uh, am I supposed, you know, and I don't think Facebook is the only one guilty of this shit. I mean, uh, all these guys, the business that Google is in, and the business that uh, YouTube is in, and which is owned by Google, and the business that uh, Facebook is in and Twitter are in, is only one thing, and that's selling data about you. That's the only thing they do for a li- That's how they make their money. You know, They I, see how you search. When I go on Facebook, they show me comic books and movies because they know that's what I'm looking at. Oh, absolutely. I laugh, I laugh and I said, look, they look at what I'm searching for. I'm reading on old movie books. They pop them on the side. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like Big Brother's watching. Absolutely. So, you know, I mean... Uh, I mean... But yeah, what? Apple seems to do a damn good job with security. I mean, you never really hear about them getting hacked or anything. Why Why don't they get into it? they got a small market share, though, really. Yeah, yeah like, but, you know, they do a good job of keeping people out, it seems like. Yeah. Could it be, Alex, that their, their operating system is a closed system, though, where Microsoft is really open to everything? Exactly. But that's, you know, that's the well, point. Who, who's a closed system? Apple really, a lot of people could really make differences. Like micro, Windows is on a lot more machines where Apple is more closed. Well, plus you they, like, you know, they don't attack, they well, don't go well, after it. it well, no, they don't really system. let you put their operating system Yeah, but on Apple is a different, but, no, but uh, Tony, Apple is a different a- animal, okay? Yeah. That, that's the problem. It's a different animal altogether. Uh, more people use Microsoft yeah. and all that. I mean, and a- it's a bigger target. Apple is a, hard, is a hardware selling company. Who make software for their hardware, and that's about it, you know. And things do get hacked occasionally, but it's not it, it it's not like a Facebook that's like this open billboard that, that people put stuff on and that you put your lives on and that you're saying all the things like today I'm getting my biopsy and now yeah, yeah, somehow yeah. Uh, Facebook knows you're getting biopsies and then all of a sudden cancer ads show up on the side of the page, you know. <laughs> I mean, there's the there's the reason. What they're selling, and the only thing they're selling, is information about you. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. It's kind of like and kind of. and and it was bound to come back to bite them in the ass eventually. Facebook's not the only one doing it, though. When I do browsing now on uh, Home Depot's website, mm-hmm. I get stuff popping up on the side oh, yeah. that I, last yeah, time well, I time. last time I did a search on their website, this stuff starts popping up on the side. Oh, yeah. Big time. That's been going on for a while, Vern. I, well, I mean, I've seen that happen a lot. All of your, I mean, you, you, if you listen, if you even use something like Drudge, uh, and you go to Drudge, uh, and you've looked up something on Amazon, it will you'll see an ad for it on uh, on on Drudge. I mean, it's, yep. it's uh, you know, and I don't know how, you know, you could prevent this by saying, well, Facebook can't collect that on you, okay? Well, and Facebook would just close their doors because they can't make money. There's no way they can make money if they can't sell data about you, mm. you know? So, I mean, that's the, yeah, yes, uh, uh, yes, Jeff. I'm curious as to, does anybody here have a particular search uh, vehicle that, that they prefer that they've had good experience with or whatever. I'm trying a new one right now to take the place of Google, and it's called Brave, Mm B-R-A-V-E. Let me see if I can find what the app's actually called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has a picture of a lion on it, and it'll do searches, but it blocks out ad, you know, if if it's trying to uh, grab ad information, it blocks it. Well, it's a browser, though, too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, With that lion, you sure it's not a Russian uh, <laughs> plant? Huh? It might be, Phil. My my phone it's may be I... blowing up any moment now. Yeah. It's Roman. <laughs> uh, yeah, roaming. <laughs> yeah. Block ads and trackers that follow you around. Well, that's mm-hmm. good. You know. Uh, is it free? Yes. It is free. Are you sure? Because it says it's easy to support the YouTube channel. How do they know? They must. They must be doing the same thing everybody else is doing. Brave browser. Uh, give the new Brave browser a try, and we will contribute to Brave browser on your behalf. Uh, so, I mean, is there money involved here somehow? Support your. They favorite. haven't asked me for my credit card. Mm. 
Support your favorite sites by downloading Brave. This referral promo is capped at five million in tokens. What the fuck did I just bring up here? Is this it? Uh, it's called the dark web. <laughs> it, it, no, it's not even the dark web. It's uh, you know. He's gonna get a virus. Huh. Yeah. Right. Right. So you yeah. know, picture Phil on your computer later. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> <Right>. With a drink. <laughs> I told you not to click that. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I mean, but but uh, you know, your lives are there's a there's a a, a, sh a fi what do you call it a uh, a thing on uh, Netflix called The Hack, and it's all about this and how they collect information on you and how you're you're really a resource to them. You know. Yeah, I saw that. I was going to watch that tonight, but I never. And, never and the question is, the question is, do you want to do away with Facebook? Do you want to do away with Twitter? Do you want to do away with YouTube? I mean, yeah. what what is, YouTube? No, Twitter, Facebook, I can do without. You can live without them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't. But I, I use YouTube to watch you, Alex. Well, of course. You know, I mean, and I use YouTube because uh, they're the best there is. You mm -hmm. know, for this. I sort thought of you thing. used it because it was free. Well, I use it because it's free, too. But even if I had to pay for it, I actually might use it. It's that. I mean, tonight I had trouble getting on, and I don't know if it's this new piece of equipment, although I'm using it now to switch, and we're not having trouble getting onto the, uh, onto the Internet. I'll work on it over the weekend. But uh, I'm not having trouble with YouTube at all now that it's, it's uh, plugged in and, and working. Uh, but... Uh, for the most part, I mean, it could have been that YouTube was down tonight for a short time. That's always possible. Uh, but I've had very little trouble with YouTube. They, it, it, Facebook, I had trouble all the time. I'm having trouble with Facebook now because they have these things called watch parties, and you used to be able to just click on something and create a watch party, and now you can't even do that. You have to go looking for it. You can't tell where anything is. Uh, Facebook is so badly arranged now that it's just this jungle to get through. Where YouTube is pretty much an easy go, you know. So. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, the last season of Orange is the New Black is on. Who cares? Uh, I watched one and a half episodes so far, season seven. Uh, Why? It's okay. Why? Why? Well, because I watched the first six seasons. And uh, it's something new. It's not bad. I, I, I like it. Yeah. Well, Women in prison. Women in lesbians. prison. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's good stuff. No. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, uh, it. Um, what? What is it that? Uh, what, uh, it, I, I watched. Uh, what I watch? I watched Veronica Mars, the new version of Veronica Mars. Uh, that was pretty she good. in prison? What? No. <laughs> no. But she's cute, you know. I was talking to somebody today about, uh, in terms of who I vote for, if there are women running, uh, is, it, is it still possible for me to say, uh, I'm going to vote for her because I'd fuck her? Is that possible? Can we do that anymore? Is that, or is that considered a no-no? Not if you lose your prostate. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Phil, please, don't bring that up. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Never gonna get over. Huh? I'll tell you what. Lost don't mention it at lunch on Sunday. <laughs> don't mention what at lunch. Yeah. Your oh, idea of what? Why? Which woman? Yeah. Is the, oh no, I wouldn't say that in polite company. No. Well, <laughs> what is this? Which you the prize? No, right? but I was going. I was saying Kamala Harris. I said I really like her politics, and I think she's. Uh, you know, the Republicans have said, there are certain Republicans who have said that she's the one they're all worried about. She thinks she could be another Obama, that she she could go up against Trump and really give him a bad time. The only she, problem is, is they'll only vote for her in New York, Massachusetts, and California. Well, and but... And South well, Carolina, too. No, that's, that, that's the only place they'll vote she's for... She's number two in the poll in South Carolina. Yeah, yeah but... The, yeah, in the uh, poll you let me fit, other oh, Democrats. Oh, Jesus, I can't get a yeah. word in edgewise. God. A statistical tie with Trump in South Carolina. All I'm saying is you don't know what it's going to be like until it's uh, down to two people, Trump and somebody else, 
and then you'll know whether she has a, hey, she has the stuff to do it. Uh, uh, the fact is, she's um, I think she's very smart. I think her politics are in the right place, and I think she will she will go toe to toe with Trump and give him a bad time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, uh, I don't think she's going to lie back and uh, take it like uh, Hillary Clinton did. I think Hillary's biggest, Hillary could have won that election if the night that he started just following her around the room yeah. in yep. the debate, if she just turned around and looked at him and said, sit down, this is creepy. You she know, would have the won Democratic the election. Party huh? tends, like, yep. tends, to annoy, tends to annoy who they want, and I think that Biden is going to wind up uh, being given the nomination regardless of what happens. He's calling him Sleepy Joe now. You see that? Well, he's been doing that forever. Yeah, yeah long yeah. time. Well, you know, I mean, just uh, he should just turn around and start calling him Creepy Donald. You know? <laughs> Joe should come up with a name for him. Yeah. Well, well the, he's already got who, Creepy Joe for You know, the, fact that, we're, wait, the fact that we're even talking well, about this shows you how low politics has gone in America. That, you like know, it, that we're saying, oh, do you hear he's calling him Creepy Joe now? Oh, well, that's a big political move. You know, I mean, that we're talking about that like it's uh, normal, you know. And it's the like, fact is like elementary school. that this man has made a mockery of the presidency. He does he not respect people, it. The same people calling uh, Mitch McConnell, Moscow Mitch, are calling him criminal Trump. Really? It's, because yeah, he's an unindicted co-conspirator in two different felonies. Which ones? Once again, it's Michael Cohen. Yeah. He's an unindicted co-conspirator. Oh, yes, you're right. You're right. So call him criminal Trump. If he doesn't win this election, he'll, either, he'll probably go to jail. Can somebody tell, can you believe that he's getting, like he comes up with these little nicknames and you're right, it's like. I mean, like is, is, that, is, is, that, is that what politics has become? You know, uh, I... I've always been the kind of person that goes, well, I don't believe in political correctness, and I try to do everything I can to be politically incorrect, uh, like saying, hey, I'd fuck her, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but, but the fact of the matter is, uh, the presidency is a hallowed institution in which it co what comes with it is a certain amount of dignity and respect for the office you're holding, you know? You, you respect the job you have, and Trump has no respect for his job. Absolutely none whatsoever. And that's pathetic. So, I rest my case. Phil? Phil? <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. you know, uh, you said the same thing about Nixon. No, know? I no, uh, I, did, no I didn't. Never yeah. said that about, no, I never said that about Nixon. Nixon. You didn't protest Nixon? I protested what he was doing, but I didn't say he didn't respect the office. He um, never did stuff like that. You know, uh, no matter how great. bad Nixon was, no matter how bad Nixon was, he respected the job. Yeah. No, I would never deny him that for a moment. You know. Yeah. What are you doing? Cleaning his weapon. Assembling my forty-five. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, Do you remember, <laughs> you remember the part that broke? <laughs> you I just changed it, and I had to disassemble. It's a Series eighty, so I had to disassemble the uh, extractor and the. Uh, uh, a firing pin. Could we, if, could we, we'll for a, a second, see the uh, see, like see the this. see the gun? What are you What are you yeah, doing? So I am uh, I am uh, just oiling the moving parts mm -hmm. and uh, setting everything up for my shoot on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Load up the slugs uh, too. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I got several. But uh, well, he's one, like the militia. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Where's the pearl handle, Phil? Don't you have a pearl handle one? Ah, it's walnut. American walnut. <laughs> He's so happy with his gun. How many guns do you own? Six or seven. Wow. Hmm. Uh, I got, uh, I'll go from the smallest to the largest. I got a 32 C camp. Mm -hmm. I got a 38 two inch snub nose uh, Smith and Wesson. Mm hmm. I've got uh, two 45 uh, 1911s. I got two 45 
officers ACP uh, three and a half inch barrels. I got a Remington 700 uh, pump shotgun. Uh, I got a 30 odd six uh, Remington <laughs> EDL. And I got uh, a 12 gauge single shot thing that I've never used. That sounded that's like 10. more than six or seven. That's, that's okay. more than six or seven. I haven't looked in a while, but that's what I got. <laughs> and if you still had your penis. <laughs> you can't blow I it. Do. Be, it's right that here. That would be 11. I got the penis. <laughs> All I need is a Porsche. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Go and I changed the firing pin spring, too. Thank you. I mean, guns <laughs> even scare me with you just holding it up there, and you're, I don't know how many thousands of miles away, you know? It scares me. Yeah? Guns scare so, me, yeah. Yeah, I never liked the gun. Yeah. Uh, what should scare you is the color of these gloves. What are the gloves for? <laughs> uh, so I don't get this Clean. crap, uh, this uh, stuff wow. called Hockey's Number Nine, and the and the oil all over my fingers. You mean you're cleaning yeah. guns on 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 the program tonight while you're yeah. there doing what you're doing? <laughs> well, you know, hey, you notice I haven't been well, talking over you too much, you know? No, you haven't. That's for it's damn sure. Kept him occupied at least. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and. The new extractor comes with a sticker. Wow. <laughs> what is it? Wilson Combat. Yeah. You don't put that on your little notebook for tomorrow? No, I'm going to put it on the back of my car to scare liberals. <laughs> this car is protected. So we know when Phil's quiet, he's playing with his three inch. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> three inch snub. Yeah. yeah. Good one, Kevin. Yeah. But uh, anyway, um, let me see here. Uh, otherwise, there's no real news. Uh, you know, um, they got these guys. Up in Canada, they're chasing these two guys. Are they killers? They, they, well, they're accused of being killers, Phil. Oh, well, they, they got the right to be accused, not like Trump, who's a felon. Oh, jeez. He's an he, unindicted co-conspirator. He's not a felon until he's convicted. Ah. All right. So February 21st? Hmm? What? But he can't be indicted until he's out of office. Yeah. I mean, this is just, you know, this is, uh, it's amazing. What can I say? I, this is the broken extractor. Really? Nowhere in the Constitution does it say you cannot indict a sitting president. It's not in the Constitution anywhere. That's a bullshit policy. Well, it's uh, from the office of the OLU, I think. OLC, Office of Legal oh. Counsel. Well, Legal you, uh, 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 Charlie, you're you're still for uh, impeachment, right? Even at this if point. You're going to be throwing all these black kids in prison for stealing a loaf of bread. You ought to be able to do Trump in prison. For I'm for bread. impeachment oh. too, but it's Nadler, Pelosi, and uh, and what, and what for? There. And what for? What but criminal? What have they done? What what have they they done, done Phil? They're mean, mean <laughs> people. Oh, and about? and Trump, Trump isn't. Is a, Trump a isn't. There's <laughs> nobody meaner than Trump. Nah, these guys are mean. You look at Nadler. There used to be a, a gin commercial where these uh, little uh, things were had umbrellas and they were floating all over the place. You ever see that one? Uh, that, no. No? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Nadler looks just like the guy. Like an umbrella drink? Yeah. Nadler's no. actually starting to lean more towards uh, bringing articles, uh, uh, impeachment investigation to the floor. They already have, didn't they? Didn't that, isn't that what he said no. today? No. He, start, he wants to start an, an impeachment inquiry. Yeah. And the reason is he thinks that it will actually give them more credence when they try to go after some of this material that the Justice Department yeah. is withholding from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see if they get as much out of out of the uh, impeachment hearings as they did Mueller. Uh, I don't think it'll go so well. Uh, really? You know, well, Mueller. The, thing, the thing I heard about the Mueller uh, hearings that. You know, could it was almost expected is that all it did was reinforce the bias that other people already had. It just confirmation bias. That's you all. You know it who looks. Lawrence Tribe is? Yep. 
All right. Did you hear what he wrote on uh, Twitter about uh, the Mueller investigation? Oh, the, not Mueller, the Mueller testimony? No, no. I didn't do that. Uh, he, he, uh, I can't quote it exactly. I was hoping one of you could. I don't look, I don't look at Twitter. Uh, well, it was on the news. Uh, you know, and he was saying how poor a job Mueller did and that it was really a uh, plus for the Republicans. Uh, he actually did a better job at the, uh, at the intelligence committee than yeah. he did at the judiciary committee. He did a much better job there. But part of the reason for that was because of, uh, Schiff did a much better job of questioning than Nadler did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think also uh, it, it looks to me like uh, he, he didn't look too well to me, to be yeah. honest with you. You know. Yeah, health-wise. Health-wise, he did not look yeah. well. You know, so, I mean, what can we say? So, uh, uh, it, You know, you didn't hear too much of him during the investigation. And, uh, you know... Maybe this I want to hear. I want to hear from Aaron Zebley. I want to hear from his assistant, Aaron Zebley. Why? What is it? What do we? What do you think he would have, Vernon? I think he knew a whole lot more about the data gay, what was going on, and about the writing of the report than Mueller did himself. Mm -hmm. Zebley was was essentially the guy running the day to day investigations. Well, you know, I I think uh, we're probably. It's just, you know, I just think that all we're doing is we're feeding into Trump at this point. I think mm -hmm. that that if we if we were to start a, a an impeachment investigation right now, and then eventually come up with an impeachment, I don't even know if we'd be able to get it done by the time of election day. You know, so what does it do? It just it just fuels a fire. It gives him more to make complain about. It's a, you can do more of this phony press shit. And you can do the stuff about witch hunts and blah blah blah. And oh poor me. Yes, that, uh, that's uh, that's uh, exactly Jeff. Did you have what? Your... That's exactly what uh, what Nancy Pelosi is saying. What yeah. you're saying, Alex? Yeah, yeah. She she's basically saying the same thing that I'm saying. That you know that that. Uh, and I think her reasoning is she's been down this road before. She's seen, I think she was around, wasn't she around for the Clinton Probably. Uh, uh, Probably. thing? Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah, think she saw, she saw how it came to nothing. It wasted a lot of time and money. By the time it got to the Senate, it was a fait accompli that he wasn't going to get convicted. And... Um, uh, took over, took it, over the House, took over the Senate. What, what we've got now here the is... the presidency in, two, in well, 2000. But what she, I think what she's saying is quit wasting time pursuing impeachment. Spend more time pursuing the presidency. Rally you know? the troops, get everybody together, yeah. and just get him out that way. And that, that you can do all of this by making a case, you know? Uh, it's, it's not impossible to make a case for this. Uh, for, for, for a kinder, gentler country, that you're going to bring the country back together, you're going to, uh, you're going to uh, uh, unite them, uh, and we'll be more civil, have a more civil discourse with each other, and, and, and hit that kind of thing. And, and don't, don't even go after Trump. You don't even have to mention Trump's name. Say what mm. you're going to do, you know? Uh, I, I don't think when, when, uh, when uh, Obama was running, I don't think he ran against somebody. He was running for the presidency. And I think that's yep. what you've got to do. But what, if, you, if you, for instance, get Biden, Biden's going to spend his whole time doing Trump this, Trump that, Trump this, Trump that, anti-Trump, Trump should shut up, ba -ba 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 -ba. you really need somebody who's going to get there and say, forget it, I'm not talking about Trump. I'm telling you about me and what I can do for you and what I can do for this country. And I think, you know, you would start getting some people going, hey, you know. Yeah, but we still got to not lose sight of the fact that Mitch McConnell is still in charge of the Senate. Mm -hmm. And if that isn't changed, it doesn't matter who the Democrats elect to be president. They're going to stonewall him just like they did Obama. Right. We'll come up with so, some bullshit you know, rule about how we can't let the president apply appoint a Supreme Court justice in his first year. That's not allowed. Yeah, and it, or his last year. Yeah. Or the middle two years either. Yeah, 
Uh, you know, that's what yeah, I found right. frustrating about this uh, billionaire Tom Steyer, who's been advocating for impeaching Trump. I think he should spend his money now trying to get more Democrats elected to the Senate and drop yeah. out of the presidential race. He's got no chance in hell. Yeah. Just spend that money instead, trying to elect as many Democrats to as many places as he can and shut up about the presidency. Yep. Yeah. Well, his his whole thing is let's, you know, let's let's uh, uh, you know, get rid of Trump. Let's let's impeach Trump. And I think that that's as somebody said Steyer would be better off if instead of going after Trump and trying to make a case for getting money uh, rather, getting uh, Trump out of office and spending all this money for impeachment, if he would just spend the money supporting candidates and yeah, supporting he's Senate for races. Money now. Huh? He's, yeah. Steyer is asking for money. He wants he's a dollar. For money. He wants it for his own presidential campaign. Yeah, though. and uh, he says he doesn't want to ask the uh, 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 co uh, corporations, so he wants the people to send them a dollar each. Uh, yeah. Well, and Steyer will come up with about fifteen dollars, but you know, I mean, um, I don't feel. I would send. I would send him ten dollars if he would drop out of the presidential race and decide he's going to start supporting people for yeah. the Senate. How yeah. do you think he became a billionaire? The same. The same thing with the uh, the the governor of Montana. He's got no business running for president, but he could probably win the Senate. How about De Blasio? De Blasio is a waste of time, too. I don't know why de Blasio is doing it. Okay, because if he I, went back to New York, the cops would turn on him for... Uh, thinking, no, 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 no. He, he's in New York doing his job. I see him on TV every day. He's at the Gracie Mansion and down at City Hall. He's here. He's Luke, doing his it, job. It's a green screen. What? Yeah. It's green screen. <laughs> yeah. He's but he, hiding but in Montana. No, no, but, you know, I mean... <laughs> A uh, lot of candidates in that basket aren't supposed to be and there, listen, and they won't be very You know, I, if de Blasio is a total loser who says things I believe. That's the trouble with him. He's a great spokesman mm -hmm. for what I believe, but he's a terrible, terrible mayor, you know, right. and he's a terrible politician and not a particularly nice person, you know, so what have you, you know. I could name I could name several people who are running for president right now that I would like to see him switch over. Beto, Julian Castro, and I'd like to see Stacey Abrams run for the seat in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who knows? Who knows? You know. Well, what are, what are we going to do about it? You know. What it, do you think it, of Andrew Yang? Nothing. A Andrew Yang is kind of a kook. I mean, he's 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 got a, a, some good ideas though because. One of the things he said was that eventually we're going to have to deal with the fact that so many jobs are going to be lost to automation. I and we're seeing that now. Look at retail jobs. You know why we I only like them? have one cashier on duty, plus somebody who was running the self the self checkouts at Home Depot today, and you, one cashier. You know yep. why I like him? Yep. Because I don't agree with him, but I think he thinks outside the box. He's thinking for the future, and uh, you know it, maybe it just takes some different thought uh, uh, to you know to do things. If you do the same thing over and over and expect a different result, nothing's going to change. And that's why you voted well, for Trump. Core, and look what one of we his got. core principles. Hey, listen, though, listen. You would call communism, Phil. He wants yeah, to have well, a guaranteed is it, is minimum that income. Progressive, Phil. That'll yeah. never happen. There's a uh, there's a theme playing here, so I got to get out of here. Uh, thank you all uh, very much. Oh. I, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, we have, uh, let's see here, Charlie Wallace. Thank you, Charlie. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, we had uh, Bree from now Kuala Lumpur. Uh, Vernon, thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, Jeff. I'll see you on Sunday. See and Sunday. Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, you guys are all terrific. Uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, give a big round of applause, a uh, round of waving goodbye, <laughs> not applause, wave goodbye to everybody out there, and I'll wave back at you. There we go. Okay, that's it. That's our citizen panel for tonight, uh, and that's our citizen panel for this week. Next up, it's uh, Jack Bishop and the intersection over most of this same gab net. Uh, we would uh, love it if you... Uh, if you um, uh, come see us uh, uh, again uh, next week, we'll be on on, uh, let's see here, what day, what day are we on? Uh, we're, day, we're on on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be here 
uh, we would be after Damien, but Damien still got the week off. But in the meantime, I'll see you at 10 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>